perhaps last night's win over the Lakers here at the Amway Center is a sign that things are starting to turn around for the match has officially begun on the Citrus Bowl. The only part of the 78-year-old stadium that will stay is the Upper Bowl. Good the evening, team. everyone. I'm Spencer Thurling. Alex Rodriguez has received some good news regarding his suspension. For the first time in 23 years, both the number one seeds will face off in the Super Bowl. NFL B fans are game, and I'm Spencer Thurling. The B-Mets capped a convincing 3-2 win last night with a record-setting performance. As the Knicks continue to struggle, free agency rumors have begun to swirl around Carmelo Anthony. The Bulls and Lakers How about this scoring frenzy in Nashville. The Avalanche take down the Predators 5-4. The Avs Nick Holman. Tonight, Trenton up. gives a nod to Dellen Batanzas, who's fresh off a win against New Britain. The B-Mets will call upon the services of Greg Peavy, who's looking Dyer to return. The venue will continue to host the Russell Athletic Bowl, Capital One Bowl, and possibly even make a run at hosting the Super Bowl. They'll have their big man back by the end of the upcoming road trip in Toronto. Reporting from the Amway Center, I'm Spencer Thurling. Good evening, I'm Spencer Thurling. Stanislas Wawrinka has stunned the tennis world by upsetting Rafael Nadal to win the Australian Open. Despite suffering a back injury in the second set, Nadal battled Wawrinka to take the third, but ultimately lacked the mobility to hold on. After the match, Stanislas said, It's really not the way you want to win a tennis match, but in a Grand Slam final, I'll take it. The Swiss star defeated respective one and two seeds Rafael Nadal and Novak Djokovic to win his first Grand Slam title. The win vaults Wawrinka from eighth to third in the ATP rankings behind who else but Nadal and Djokovic. A big night in the NHL with two of the Western Conference's best, the Ducks and the Blackhawks, squaring off in Chi-Town. Bruce Boudreaux's Ducks came in hot, having won 18 of their last 19. We start in the first period scoreless. The Ducks with a man advantage, but it's Taves who finds Marion Hosa for the shorthander. On to the third, Hawks 2-0 as Brett Seabrook makes a long-distance call to Brian Bickle, who tips the puck off Hiller's pad, but the Ducks keeper couldn't control the Blackhawks 3-0. Later in the third, it's a three-on-one opportunity for Anaheim. Ryan Getzloff decides to keep it, and the Ducks captain puts him on the board with his 24th of the year. Ducks weren't done quacking yet. Just about a minute later, Kyle Palmieri lasers one through some traffic and passed Kyle Crawford. Chicago would go on to score again, securing a 4-2 win. Another exciting game, 280 miles away in Detroit with the Red Wings taking on the Kings. Wings trying to turn things around after losing three of their last four games. Jimmy Howard and Jonathan Quick would both play massive roles in this contest. We pick this one up in the third with time running out and LA up 2-1, but it's Zetterberg who finds Cromwell for one of the most bizarre goals you will ever see. Watch closely as the deflection goes off the netting, then bounces off the back of Quick for the score. The play was not reviewable because a whistle was not blown when the puck went out. A bad break for the Kings sends the game to a scoreless OT. Shootout time, first man up is Thomas Tartar. He goes far side to beat quick. Kings down to their last man. It's Richards who gets stuffed by Howard. Wings go on to win 3-2 with the extra point. Elsewhere in the NHL, another shootout between the Flames and Canucks gives Vancouver a 3-2 win. How about this scoring frenzy in Nashville? The Avalanche take down the Predators 5-4. The Avs' Nick Holden racked up three points, including two goals. Just days away from the Olympic opening ceremonies, new concerns are being raised about the Games. However, this time it's not about security or human rights, but the very element on which so many of the events rely, snow. Sochi organizers are relying heavily on man-made snow and even snow stored in warehouses from last winter as the Black Sea Resort's temperatures soar into the 50s. And that's not all. A study by the University of Waterloo predicts that only six of the previous 19 host cities could be viable destinations to host the Games by 2080 due to climate change. The Olympic flame will be lit in Sochi February 7th, but you can guarantee it won't be close to any of the city's precious snow. That's what the weather's looking like for the Olympics, but stick around. We'll be right back with your local forecast after the break. He joins us with this sports report. What's going on? Thanks, Scott. The Winter X Games will be missing a familiar face when they get underway in Aspen January 24th. Sean White has decided to hold out of the X Games to focus on the upcoming Olympics in Sochi, Russia. White is the most decorated athlete in X Games history with 23 medals, most of which are gold. Known as the Flying Tomato, White has dominated the halfpipe scene here in both the X Games and Olympics. However, a string of recent injuries, including this nasty crash in Olympic qualifying, have left White dinged up. 1080. Switch back 1080, I'm sorry. And Sean is down. White's coach Bud Keen insists the two-time Olympic gold medalist is healthy but cited injuries that held back White's training schedule as the reason for skipping the games. White heads into Sochi as a favorite both to defend his half-pipe medal and win the inaugural slope-style event. Back to you, Scott. Thank you for that.